Where, yeah, it doesn't have to be conscious. Um, yeah, there is a bit of a paradox there, but we like paradoxes. We're in philosophy. That's good. That, that's fine. I, I think that's right. When we re I mean, I can talk about both together. When, when you resect the tumor and you prevent this guy from feeling the compulsion to act uh, on pedophilic urges, uh, you have actually intervened to do this, but you've given him more freedom because he doesn't seem to be quite under the control of that anymore. Um, it's interesting to know whether when he's in the grip of that state, whether he wants to be operated on or not. But, but he does, because he's somebody who says he knows this is wrong. He think, he, that's still intact, that view about it being wrong. And I agree with you, Sandra. This is, these, are, these are the cases, I think, that are really tough. I mean, you, you want to say yes, it causes it. But um, it's causing something very specific. I mean, what it's actually doing is preventing you from being inhibited. But that it's preventing inhibition of pedophilia is interesting, right? I mean, why, why is it allowing that? So, I mean, I'd like to know more about the history of this guy before, before uh, he had the tumor, just, just to be sure. Because it's a very specific condition that, that's been created. And it's certainly going to be true that Lots of people who have pedophilic tendencies don't have tumors, and so you know we don't want to say that's the only way in which you know you're you're give up. It is happening that lawyers are at the moment trying, when they've got very difficult cases, to you know ask if they can have their patient, they have their clients scanned just on the off chance that they find a tumor. They might find tumors that have nothing to do with <laughs> what they're being convicted of. So again, we have to have very tight causal evidence that it's damage in this area that's leading to these specific behaviors or these problems of inhibition or disinhibition and so on. So, so I, that's why I think these are tough cases. The, the, the re-arrest data, I think that's very interesting. I, I, would, I would not like to leave that evidence out if, if a panel are making decisions about high-risk uh, criminals, whether they're released or not, I think you want to have that uh, information, but it's just one piece of information that goes with everything else. So um, I think these cases make me worried, um, and I, I don't think they can be ignored. But, but exactly what we should say about them, as usual, it's all about the details.